fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hey! As Silver and Scout leaped the railroad tracks and raced to the top of the rise beyond, the Lone Ranger and Tonto could see the source of the red glow in the sky. A ranch house in the valley was in flames. Silver and Scout thundered down the slope toward it. You know who lives there, Tonto? Ah, a fellow named Edgar. Him raised plenty good horses. I don't see any horses in the corral. Ah, oh, that's right. I don't see anyone around at all. Jim Sabi, you look in front of ranch house. They're man on ground. Yes, that's a woman lying near him. Run through Get him up, scout! A moment later, the masked rider and the Indian were reining up beside the unconscious Scott Edgar and his wife. Oh, 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 easy, oh, easy, oh, easy, easy, scout. Easy, scout. Man, we'll to see what you can do for him. I'll take a look at the woman. Ah. Um, She's still alive. Bullet, please, man, scout. Come to fix it. Oh. oh, don't be frightened. Frightened? Not. Is it still... Oh... My baby. i got to get him out of there. I won't let you stop me. Haven't you done enough? Your baby's not building. I told you so. Oh, Daddy. You didn't tell me. Tell him I just arrived. Where? Where's your baby? In the bedroom, beyond the living room. i got You're not in to condition him. to do anything. I'll try to find him. There's a chance I can get in through one of the rear windows. Oh, please, please. The Lone Ranger ran to the rear of the burning ranch house. The flames were being driven by the wind toward the front, and although smoke was pouring from the open windows, the masked man didn't hesitate. He climbed in. <coughs> Inside, it was impossible to see anything. The smoke bit into his nostrils, and he tried not to breathe. He groped his way forward. His hand touched a bed. This was the room. Then a tongue of flame shot through the open door, and at the same moment, he heard a plaintive cry from the far corner. The baby was lying in a cradle. Quickly, the Lone Ranger wrapped a blanket around it and started back for the window. In another moment, he was outside, and when he reached the front of the house, Mary Edgar came running toward him. You found him. You found him. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Let me take him. Of course. He hasn't been hurt. Oh, Danny, Danny. Oh, as long as you and your daddy are safe, I don't care about anything else. There's no chance of saving the ranch, Mrs. Edgar. I don't care. What happened? Outlaws like you, but brutal, cruel... Garrett's gang. You're sure? Scott recognized him. It was Bonnie Garrett, all right. He didn't come here simply to burn you out. No. He wanted our horses. 
And his men took them, all of them. Mrs. Edgar, believe me, I'm not an outlaw. I don't care if you are or not. You saved my baby's life. And for that, I'll be eternally grateful. Mary! Oh, that's Scott. I, I must go to him. Hey, sitting up. The Indian vanished his head while you were inside. Oh, Scott. Scott, look. It's Danny, and he's safe. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad. And this was a man who saved him? Yes. The Indian's been telling me something about him. The big white horse he rides. His name is Silver. Silver? And the Indian's name is Tonto. Well, then he We're your be... friends. We want to help you. But there's nothing you can do now except turn those crooks over to the law. We'll do our best to catch them. The first thing, though, is to find some shelter for you and your husband and your baby. Do you have any friends around here? Well, our nearest neighbor's 20 miles away. I have a brother in Junction City. And you can stay with him until you're strong enough to get around? Sure. Only without any horses, without a wagon. The or... night train from Dorado to Junction City will be passing in a few minutes. We'll build a fire on the tracks and stop it. It's a freight train. But it always carries a caboose. You'll be in Junction City in the morning. And you too. You and Tonto. As soon as you and your family are safely on your way, we'll pick up Garrett's trail and follow it. Oh, that easy. There are plenty of hope prints. We better carry Edgar up the hill to the tracks, Tonto. Uh, Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Scott Edgar was carried up the hill to the railroad tracks, and a bonfire was lit in the middle of the right-of-way. Fifteen minutes later, the slow freight for Junction City stopped just short of it. The conductor and a tall man dressed in black broadcloth and a fancy vest climbed down from the caboose. The Lone Ranger kept to the shadow of a tree beside the tracks, where his mask could not be seen. Uh, here, what's the idea? What's the matter? Oh, here, passengers. Man's been wounded, Angus. Yes. Outlaws have burned our ranch. We want to get to Junction City. I'm not supposed to pick up any passengers along the way. Is that so, Angus? A girl with yellow hair had stepped out on the platform of the caboose. I got my orders, Lil. I don't care anything about your orders. The man's wounded and the woman has a baby. We can't leave them standing here beside the tracks. Step right up, man. But we're carrying gold. The engineer should have driven straight through the fire they built. He's got more sense than you have. Go on, ma'am. Thank you. And you, Todd, give the Indian a hand. Sure thing. Always glad to be of help. You, you carry legs. Right. Don't have got him under arm. All uh, right. Uh, All right. This won't be so good, Lil. What difference does it make? What harm can they do? You've already got Todd Malone on board, and he's a much tougher customer. I couldn't stop him from coming. He bought a ticket in Dorado. It doesn't matter. You just leave everything to me until we pick up Barney. All right. You got the rancher settled comfortable, Injun? Ah. Uh, You're not traveling with us? No. No, me got horns. Well, that's good. Now give Joe the signal. Let her ramble! Tuttle joined the Lone Ranger at the side of the tracks as the train pulled away. Tuttle, the girl with the light hair... You've been in Dorado. Have you seen her there? Ah. Her sing in cafe. And the man in the broadcloth suit. Oh, him gambler. Call him Todd Malone. People in El Dorado like him. I heard the girl talking to the conductor. For some reason, he didn't want to take Mr. and Mrs. Edgar along. Oh, him have orders. That wouldn't explain what he said to her. There's gold on the train. Barney Garrett's gang is somewhere in the hills between here and Junction City. Then better we find him quick? Yes. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Which way do we go? Well, them right east. Todd will show you way, you big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Toto were soon far ahead of the train. The grades were steep through the hills, and on every one of them, the locomotive slowed to a walking pace as it reached the top. At midnight, Scott Edgar, covered with a blanket, was sleeping peacefully, and little Danny was asleep in his mother's arms. The conductor was out on the platform, and Lil was making coffee. Todd Malone stood beside her. Lil, why don't you ask me why I'm going to Junction City? I'm not interested. All right, I'll tell you. I'm following you. You may be sorry for that before the night's over. Why? Never mind. <laughs> Enjoy on every minute of the trip. Todd, why should you follow me? What else can I do? I've asked you to marry me, and you haven't given me an answer. I'll never marry a gambler. All right, I'll turn rancher. I'll raise horses like Edgar. 
Maybe I'll help him rebuild his place and go into partnership with him. I have the money, he has the experience. What do you think of that? It's a good idea for both of you. What about both of us? How we should forget about us. For good? For a little while, Todd. I've asked you to do that before. Yes. But you haven't given me any reason. So I can't. Todd, will you do me a favor? What? The train's slowing down. <laughs> Nothing unusual about that. When we get to the top of this hill, jump off. What for? Don't ask any questions. Just do it. And I promise you that when I get back to Dorado, it'll only be a few days, I'll give you an answer. Fine. As long as the answer's yes. Uh, aren't you forgetting something? What? If I'm to get back to Dorado, I have to walk. That won't hurt you. <laughs> It'll hurt my feet. No, thanks, Lil. All right. But I want to know why you should ask such a thing. I can't tell you. Mrs. Edgar, would you like some coffee? Oh, very much. It's all ready. Here you are. Thank you. You want me to hold the baby while you're drinking? <laughs> no, no, I can manage. She's sleeping so nicely, I don't want to disturb him. I wish you'd tell me a little more about the man who saved his life. It wasn't the Indian. No. But we didn't see anybody else around when we stopped. He wasn't very far away. Why should he hide? He isn't an outlaw, is he? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, he's a good friend of the sheriff in Junction City. He's going to try and find the men who burned our ranch. And why should he be so mysterious? I'm sorry, I, I can't tell you anymore. Now, listen. The conductor's talking to somebody. Somebody who just climbed aboard. <laughs> Looks like we have another passenger. What, what, what is it, Mary? It's nothing, Scott. Go back to sleep. Go on in. What? Mary, that man with the conductor, it's Barney Garrett. It is. It's true. I saw his face by the light of the fire. Is that right? You're covered, mister. Up with your hands. <laughs> and don't try to make a getaway. Angus, there's some rope over there on the bench. Tie him up. We'll take him to the sheriff in Junction City. I don't want any part of it. I'll do it. Keep out of this, Mrs. Edgar. Huh? Drop your gun, Todd. <laughs> Tell him, Lil. And punch that gun of yours in his ribs so you'll know you mean business. It's you that's covered, Todd. Drop your gun. You can't mean... And don't you... try to turn around. Drop your gun or I'll have to shoot. Get it, Angus. All right. You can use that rope on the bench to tie him up. Good work, Lil. That was slick, the way you slipped around in back of him. So you're working for this poor cat, Lil. What does it look like? It looks like I've been a fool from the word go. This was why you wouldn't listen to me. There's no sense in talking about it now. Put your hands behind your back, Malone. And after you finish with him, tie up the Edgar woman. There's no need of that, Barney. And her husband's too weak to make any trouble. Let him alone. Hmm. Well, for a while, maybe. Where's the gold? In the next car. You better tie this hombre's feet, too. Your plans haven't changed any, have they, Barney? No. Boys will be waiting at the top of Lookout Hill. Those boxes are heavy. We've got a wagon. We'll follow the old south trail straight to the border. How about stopping the train? They'll drop a tree across the tracks. But the engineer and the fireman have rifles. Angus and I'll see if they don't use them. Now down on the floor, mister. <laughs> You're a brave man, Angus. Shut up. There's one thing you ought to know about, Barney. The hombre that saved the young one from the fire is out looking for you. He might be a lawman. The woman won't talk about him at all. Well, she won't, huh? Well, I'll change that. Keep your hands off my wife. <laughs> sure. But if she won't talk, I'll just toss the kid off the rear platform. Oh, no. Oh, no, I I'll tell you who saved his life. It was the Lone Ranger. Barney, the Lone Ranger. And it's true, he's after you. You'll never get away with this holdup. Let him try to stop us. I got 20 men at the top of Lookout Hill, and there isn't one of them who wouldn't give up his share of the gold to put a bullet through the Lone Ranger. Thanks for the tip, Mrs. Edgar. We'll be watching for him. If he tries to stop us, he'll stop lead. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. After leaving the Edgar Ranch, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the trail left by the outlaws. But even the Indians' keen eyes missed the place where Barney had dismounted and headed down a rocky slope to the railroad tracks. Shortly after midnight, they had reached the foot of Lookout Hill, and from the summit they could hear the sound of an axe. Oh, 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 cut down tree, Kimasabi. Yes. Even if we can't see them, it's obvious what they're trying to do. Ah, them block tracks, stop trains, steal the gold it's carrying. Well, they won't get away with the tunnel. And what we do? First, we'll keep to the cover of the trees and ride to the top of the hill. We'll have to find out how many of them there are. There may be 50 horses. There aren't that many riders. Maybe half not carry rider. They're leaving the horses they stole from Edgar. They're evidently planning on a long trip. Ah, and them need fresh horses. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Scout. From the cover of the trees at the top of the hill, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the outlaws as they chopped down a great pine. They could see a cavy of horses and a wagon on the trail that crossed the railroad tracks at the very crest of the rise. The axe gleamed in the moonlight and bit into the pine. There was a shout from the men, and the tree fell across the tracks. Now they're ready for the train. Ah. And load gold into wagon, head south. At least 20 men, Tonto. You see Barney Garrett anywhere? No, me not. Neither do I. He'll be around for the holdup, though. Ah. Junction City's only ten miles away. You better ride and get the sheriff. Now, Tonto, do that. And you wait here? Yes. You should be back in time with the sheriff and his men. It'd be a fine thing if we could catch these crooks red-handed. Let them hold up train? Let them start. But if you haven't returned by the time the train rounds the bend at the bottom of the hill, I'm going to warn the engineer. Oh, train, stop. Outlaws, outlaws ride down to meet them. But the roadbed's narrow. A cliff on one side and a sheer drop on the other. They'll make good targets. You better get started, Kimosabe. Uh, get him up, Scout. An hour later, the train was nearing Lookout Hill. Todd Malone, bound hand and foot, was still lying on the floor of the caboose. The Edgars huddled together in a corner, while Barney, Lil, and Angus, the conductor, were leaning out the windows on the other side of the car. As soon as we round the next curve, we'll be heading up the long grade to the top of the hill. It's time you and I started forward, Angus. I'm ready. Maybe you better come along with us, Lil. Why? You two can handle the engineer and the fireman. They won't expect you. I like the way you handle a gun. I've done my part. <laughs> it won't be safe for you to stay in this caboose. Why not? Well, I've been thinking. I don't like the idea of leaving so many witnesses behind us. Why won't it be safe in the caboose? Because halfway up the grade, I'm going to uncouple it. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Lil. It'll be traveling so fast by the time it reaches the bottom, it won't be able to make the turn. It'll leave the tracks and fall straight to the bottom of the canyon. You murderer! He's murdered enough people, Mrs. Edgar. Reach, Barney. Lil, what's the idea of the gun? I'll tell you before I use it. My name isn't Lil. It's Lynn Martin. Is that so? Any relation to young Dave Martin? I'm his sister. I thought you might be. You look a lot alike. It was because of you that he turned outlaw. And you were the one who killed him. When I heard about it, Barney, I swore that I'd get even. That's why I came to Dorado. That's why I took a job in the cafe. And that's why I agreed to help you with this holdup. Why should you be so friendly if you think I killed your brother? I know you killed him. And I'm getting even tonight. That's so? Barney, the sheriff at Junction City knows all about this holdup. I sent word to him. He and his posse should be waiting up there for you and your men this very minute. As soon as the train stops, he'll close in. How did you get word of the sheriff? Jimmy Mason took it for me. <laughs> you won't laugh for long, Barney. I'm going to hold you and Angus right here until we reach the top of the hill. You're going to jail, Barney. You're not going to laugh anymore. You're going to hang. You're right. I'm tired of laughing. Give me that gun. Stay where you are. One step and I'll shoot. I mean it. Go ahead. All right. Oh. Give me that gun. If it hadn't missed fire, It I... didn't miss fire. Look, I emptied it half an hour ago when you laid it down on the bench. Better tie her up, Angus. Tie all of them up. Well, that's the way it should be. I get those hands behind oh. your back. Todd, I'm sorry. I've been a fool. I shouldn't have pulled a gun on you. I was afraid that Barney would go for his gun, and I didn't want you to be hurt. I was so sure the sheriff would get it. That's all right, honey. The sheriff will. You're wrong, Malone. The girl sent a message to him, all right, but it never got to Junction City. 
Jimmy Mason is dead. Dead? He was followed. I never trusted you for a minute. You were watched every second in Dorado. Then, then you're going to get away with it. I sure am. Finished with her, Angus? Yeah. Get down. Now the others. You're not going to touch my wife. Sit down, Scott. Edgar, you're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> oh, no. Why not put a bullet through all of them? And have the engineers stop to find out what's wrong? Oh, no, no. Tie him up. Oh, please. Not the baby. I'm not asking for my own life, but he can't hurt you. Tie him up, Angus, and make it fast. We're rounding the curve. The Lone Ranger had been forced to wait at the top of the hill in order to keep a lookout for the sheriff's arrival. When he heard the train whistle far below him, he realized he must ride down the railroad right-of-way in order to stop the train in time. This meant exposing himself to the outlaw's fire. He swung into the saddle and urged Silver toward the tracks. The outlaw saw him and opened fire. But not until he had reached the tracks and swung down the long grade, he kept Silver close to the wall of the cliff, deep in the shadow, so that even the engine's searchlight didn't pick him up. As he neared it, the train was nearly halfway up the slope. The engineer was leaning out of the cab, trying to discover where the shots were coming from. The masked man started to call to him, but then he noticed something else. The man on top of the caboose. Now it's a car next to it. There's another man climbing up. What are they doing? The answer to his question came almost at once. The caboose separated from the rest of the train. It stood motionless for a second and then started down the slope. The Edgars are in that car. I've got to stop it. Silver flashed by the locomotive and then one after another of the cars. He was past the last one that carried Barney and Angus before the two men saw him. The caboose was gaining speed, but Silver responded to the urgency in his master's voice. He lengthened his stride in spite of the treacherous footing, and now he was alongside the caboose. The brakes on the rear platform. Got to make it all the way back there. The great stallion made a supreme effort, and at last the rear platform of the car was close beside him. The masked man freed himself of his stirrups. The platform was above him, so he stood in the saddle, balancing himself with a hand on the pommel. The right moment came. He jumped. It. He landed on the car steps and grabbed the railing. He swayed back. It seemed that he would fall, but he pulled himself upright and ran up the steps. He started turning the brake wheel. The car was rushing down to the end of the grade and a sharp turn at the bottom. Even with the brake fully set, the car's speed remained constant. But then the brakes took hold, just enough, and the caboose held to the rails as it rounded the curve. A hundred feet further on, on level ground, it stopped. It's the mass man! Baby, is he all right? Yes, Mrs. Edgar, he seems to be. It's all right now, isn't it, young fellow? Yes, I'll just set you down nice and easy. There. i get those ropes off you, Mrs. Edgar, first. Who were those two men I saw on top of the car? The one next to this one? Barney Garrett was one of them. And the other was Angus McCready, the conductor. There you are, Mrs. Edgar. Oh, thank you. Oh, Danny. Danny, boy. Now, what's your name? Lynn Martin. The conductor's working with Garrett, isn't he? Yes. Lift your hands up a little. There. Good. From what you said to him when Mr. and Mrs. Edgar were getting on board, I thought you must be doing the same thing. I pretended that I was. I wanted to see Garrett and all his men captured. Garrett killed my brother and Jimmy Mason. There. Thank you. I gather you've learned that it's wiser to leave such men to the law. Yes, I certainly have. What's that shooting? What's going on? The outlaws have probably reached the train. Here's my knife, Miss Martin. Cut the ropes on the others. All right. Don't any of you leave this car. Here, Silver. Steady, big fellow. Easy. Come on, boy. Back around the bend. When the Lone Ranger rode around the bend, the shooting had stopped. He could see the train motionless near the top of the hill and the outlaws swarming around it. Come on, Silver! Silver charged up the slope. A great boulder jutted out of the cliff within range of the train. And it was there that the Lone Ranger pulled Silver to a stop. Oh, oh Silver. Easy. Steady, big fellow. The outlaws were beginning to unload the heavy boxes of gold. The masked man took cover and opened fire. His first shot wounded one of the men, and the others left him lying on the ground as they threw themselves behind any cover they could find. Then they returned the masked man's fire. The Lone Ranger had only one purpose, to keep the men away from the car that held the gold. For a full 30 minutes, as bullets dug up the dirt at his side and clipped the rock in front of him, he succeeded in his plan. The 30 minutes was long enough. At the end of that time, he heard the shouts of the sheriff's posse at the top of the hill. That's the sheriff. They still have to hold the fort here. This is the only way they can escape. Have to stop them from getting past. And the Lone Ranger's blazing guns held them back. The fight continued for 15 minutes, and then the outlaws had had enough.
the sheriff's posse rode down from the top of the hill to round them up. The Lone Ranger joined Tonto and the sheriff at the side of the train. Mister, we'd have gotten here too late if it hadn't been for you. It was a goal that held them here. How about the train crew? The engineer and the fireman are wounded. They'll be all right. But the conductor is dead. He was a member of the gang. Then it's good riddance. And it'll be good riddance for you, Gad. Go on, arrest me. All you can charge me with is attempted robbery. Oh, you're wrong. Sheriff, there are some people down at the bottom of the hill who can tell you the whole story of what happened tonight. Good. The charge against you is murder, Garrett. You're on your way to the gallows. By morning, the tree had been lifted off the tracks and the train had backed down the grade. The caboose had been hooked on once more. Scott and Mary, Lynn and Todd, watched the rising sun as they cleared the top of Lookout Hill. A new day, Todd. For all of us, honey. Is it a deal, Scott? Are we going to be partners? We sure are. And we owe it all to one man. Our future, our, our very lives. Oh, Danny boy. You won't remember last night, but I'll tell you about it. And you'll be proud to say that once upon a time you met the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.